Okay, this is tutorial 13 on how to make a plane in Plane Maker. Here's where we left off. You saw how I started the process, how with a based on an image, I dragged in all the parts that I could recognize. And after that, of course, you have to do more research. You have to see if you can find an owner's manual, find PDF files online that outline flight procedures for this kind of airplane and stuff like that. And this is the cockpit we have using nothing but Plane Maker's generic instruments. Okay, well, this is a very generic looking cockpit. Based on the research I've done, I've tried to incorporate all the knowledge that I have in every single function of this cockpit, but some were obviously mismatches. I didn't have a few things that might be very specific to this particular airliner, and so I have to compensate for that just simply by filling out the cockpit in other places or putting the levers and knobs and buttons uh, somewhere on the cockpit where it fits. And in some cases, Plane Maker has similar functions to the one we actually find in the Embraer, but it doesn't quite match. So you have to always go in and make those kinds of decisions based on how accurate you want to make it. Now, there's an issue with accuracy. Basically, what we're trying to do here, we're trying to map a 3D space onto a 2D surface. And that always generates problems. For example, all the stuff that's down here, it's found on like an armrest type of thing. And it's very hard to represent that with perspective here in this 2D panel maker. Same thing with this uh, ceiling panel here. It's actually slanted backwards. But for now, we want to explore a way in which we can take this cockpit further than it is right now. I would say there's about three levels that you could have a cockpit in X-Plane. One level is this one where you only use the generic panel and the generic instruments provided by the software. The next level is you go in and tweak the panel in Photoshop to make it look more like the airplane you're trying to simulate and also tweak all the backgrounds of all these instruments. Notice if I drag one of these instruments around uh, it becomes clear that it is somewhere, it must be a PNG file of some sort that you can open in Photoshop and edit it. So we're going to explore how we can go ahead and edit those instruments. Now the third level of realism, and this is the one I eventually want to get to in these tutorials, is a 3D immersive cockpit where you look around and you see everything as though you were sitting inside of it. Then all the angles and everything would be completely true to the real thing and you'd have a totally immersive and realistic experience. But for now we're just going to have to be satisfied with the exploring what can be done with this 2D cockpit and take it as far as we can. Okay, so the first thing I did is I created a screen capture of this particular layout of the cockpit. All the instruments that I placed in here, I just drag them in according to the function I thought they should perform and I eyeballed all of their positions. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to import that screen capture into Photoshop. So here we have that screen capture with the panel loaded in the background, the empty airliner panel that comes with X-Plane. And now I'm asking myself how can I make both the background and the panel more realistic. Now I've downloaded a couple of pictures and I've placed them into layers here as much as I could following the outline of what we have here with the plane maker background. And you'll notice that in every single one of these pictures, this glare panel up here is way too high uh, compared to the rest of the instruments. And what that does is it just limits our visibility outside. I mean, this comes closest, but the problem is this is not even a cockpit of an Embraer that we're modeling. You can tell by these two engines here that are hanging underneath the wings. So we're going to have to make some adjustments and some compromises and some tweaks that will allow us to make the best possible work we can with the constraints of working in 2D space. All right, so what I want to do first is go in and change the panel. So from the looks of it, it looks like we're really going to have to Frankenstein something together here from the given material we have. Or again, we work with synthetic material. We just work with the gradients or with whatever we have and go for a crisper look just like I showed you with the uh, with the libraries. Well that's going to take a long time to do right now but let me just point out to you how the folder structure would look once you're customizing your panel. So say for example I decide to incorporate this or part of this image into my custom cockpit panel like say for example I go like this. So we're starting to have a customized panel. Now what do we do with this panel? We're going to go ahead and export this panel now we're working with customization. So the way X-Plane does customization is, so for example, if you were to type in cockpit in here, you would tell Plane Maker to start looking for your cockpit items in here. And the next folder you have to create is called panels. And this one is written with a minus. 
and then all caps, and then minus again. This is just the folder structure that X-Plane looks for when it loads up your plane. And then here, you have to rewrite this and call it panel with a small p. And once you have it saved, you can go ahead and go back to Plane Maker and hit the refresh button here. And whoa, you've got that custom cockpit now in the background. So this is the beginning stages of creating your custom cockpit and taking your plane to the next level of realism. The next thing that you would do then in this process is take each of these instruments and do the same thing we're doing with the cockpit. So for example, here I have this uh, map instrument. This instrument, I have to look for it, map underscore t underscore ga dot png. So what I would do is I would go to x-plane and then I would go to resources and then bitmaps and then cockpit. Oh, and one point about this folder. Remember I made the cockpit folder inside my ERJ140 folder? Well, this is the structure that you're going to expect to see as you go in and replace these different instruments that are in these subcategories. X-Plane is going to load up and only find them in your particular airplane's folder, in this case it's the ERJ140, if they are arranged exactly like they are arranged in the top directory of the X-Plane folder. So you're only going to have success with replacing generic instruments for custom instruments if you follow the exact and stringent naming conventions and structure of this cockpit folder that you have here in the X-Plane folder. So again, I'm looking for the map TGA PNG panel. So I would look for it here under EFIS, and then EFIS maps, and then map TGA dot PNG. I'm going to preview this. Yep, this is the one I want to replace. So what I will do is I will make a copy of this, and I'm going to make a new folder in my ERJ140 directory under cockpits, it's going to exactly match the path we have here underneath the cockpit folder in the main X-Plane directory. So here we already have panels, and now we have to create a folder called EFIS. So I go here and create a folder called EFIS, and then I double click on that and go to EFIS space maps and create a new folder here called EFIS space maps. And now I go inside here and I paste the item I copied. So this now, if I alter this image, it should actually be altered in Plane Maker as well. Let's try it out. Let's load this image up in Photoshop. And let's see what happens if we tweak it here. And let's save this. And let's see when we go back to Plane Maker and refresh this PNG. Sure enough, it shows up there with that big yellow circle in the middle. Now we've customized this particular instrument, and you can imagine how we can go in and customize every single instrument on this panel to make it look more realistic and more like the Embraer's own cockpit. So that's the process that we would have to go through now in order to maximize the possibility we have in Plane Maker without using any 3D graphics objects, just by tweaking 2D panels and instruments in order to make a much more realistic looking cockpit. So I don't have time to actually do that in this uh, tutorial. There's a lot of tweaks and stuff that have to be done in Photoshop and that needs to be learned. So again, a resource like lynda.com will help you become better at Photoshop and uh, maybe in my next tutorial I can show for a much more customized cockpit. So a lot of what I just showed you is being done by very many people on xplane.org a lot of the planes there have high levels of customization and even 3D objects and stuff like that, and they're available completely free. So explain.org is an awesome resource to get a whole bunch of ideas and materials, and the community is normally very helpful in answering questions you might have about your project. There's documentation, there's example files, and all that stuff. So log on to uh, explain.org where you can also then upload a version of your plane for others to download and evaluate. Okay, I hope this was clear, and probably next I'm going to go through and just fill in some of the gaps we left as we explore Plane Maker and fill you in on some of those details and possibilities of, of what kinds of planes you can make in Plane Maker and those kinds of stuff. So, thanks again for watching.